so this particular day I had finished my singing and I came to the health desk. There were two chairs. My colleague, who happens to be the wife of my manager now, Ivy, was on one. And then there was this free one and I sat on it. And when I sat down about five minutes into it, a young man who now happens to be my husband walked up to us and said, excuse me, you are sitting on my chair. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was so crossed. I was like, listen, you're not even a gentleman. Why, you know, so I just got up. I said, you can have it. And he went, oh, I was just joking. You can sit. I was like, no, my sorry. For That's right. I was... <laughs> <laughs> and Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like and comment. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to start with how we met and, and we talk our way through it. And I, I'm a talker. So when, when I'm going wayward and I speak, I don't know if I'm because I'm going to come on. One of them, one of them is not good. One of them is the right one. And I, <laughs> but usually I'm talking in excitement. She, about 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we went for a PENSA conference at um, Tech. We had, I had done this, I had been in nursing school, and this was my third year. Mm. And so my third year was done at Tech. I was at Confanoche, and then I, we went to um, Tech to do this PENSA conference. And I was supposed to be at a health desk because obviously I was a student nurse. Mm -hmm. And when we're at Spencer Conference, the student nurses and the medical students are the ones that man the health desk. Mm. And so I was supposed to be at the health desk. I think this glass is, the light is jumping into it. If, it, if, if you I don't get, need it. Yeah, if I get I was supposed to be at um, the health desk. But Diana has been singing all her life, like, and so when I get there and you give me a microphone and an, a syringe, I will take the microphone and leave the syringe. That's it's, right. It's a no brainer. So I'd always jump onto the stage. So I was, I had been singing. I had never been to the health desk. And so this particular day I had finished my singing and I came to the health desk. There were two chairs. My colleague who happens to be the wife of my manager now, Ivy was on one. And then there was this free one and I sat on it. And when I sat down about five minutes into it, a young man who now happens to be my husband walked up to us and said, excuse me, you are sitting on my chair. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was so crossed. I was like, listen, you're not even a gentleman. Why, you know, so I just got up. I said, you can have it. And he went, oh, I was just joking. You can sit. I was like, no, my sorry. for That's right. I was, <laughs> <laughs> you have it. I was like, you know, so that was the first time I'm, I ever met him. Um, but I think you have seen me sing. I think so, yeah. Yeah, You've I think come he, to sing at I Pensa had come to days. sing at Pensa um, so many times then. Um, but that was the first time we met. Fast forward, we were brought into, they came to Confanoche. I think midway through your training, you leave tech and come to Confanoche. Mm -hmm. And so we came to Confanoche and um, we were in the same cell meeting. And so when we finished our cell meeting, the medical students will walk us to the, the nurse's hostel. And so we'll do this journey, myself, Joseph, my manager's wife now, Ivy, Rhoda, a, lo a lot of them, we all ended up marrying each other. You know, it was so funny. I think it was just David that married. Them. That cell has a lot of questions to that answer. Cell, that cell has a lot of questions to answer because <laughs> a lot of us married each other. But we would walk into the nurse's hostel and at this particular time, I was speaking to him, trying to link him up with other, you know, well, why not go out with this one? Why not go out with this one? It wasn't in my mind to even date him or anything. Um, I think he had a mind of his own. So one day he just said, what about you? You want us to be alone on here? I like the reaction. Yeah. 
I like, I like, please turn on your cameras. It makes me know whether I'm talking too much, whether- Yes, it, please it, turn it, on the cameras for it, us. It, it just, it's like uh, when I'm on stage and I'm talking. That's <laughs> right. That's it's just right. nice to see some reactions. Some reaction so That's that I know right. it's going well or it's not. It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> please turn the camera on. That's for this love story. If you don't, uh, come on guys. <laughs> 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 and um and and he asks what about you now that i think about it that was smooth wasn't it like yes i'm a for a pentacles for a pentacles boy that was a smooth line <laughs> that, was, that was a very smooth line he took me on the west um but on, on a more serious note i think i had i had set certain standards for myself and i'll tell you those standards i had set for myself one of the first one was the first person I ever said yes to was going to be my husband. Mm. Whoever I agreed to date was going to be my husband. So it was a very hard task knowing who was the right one. Um, and I knew that this was either going to make or make me. And I got very confused. And I, at that particular time, I had a lot of people that were interested in me. Mm. And for for this, I would stop here for a minute and, and tell every young lady listening who's not married, that is always the ripe time for you. And when that time comes and you don't seize it, you will miss it. Mm. Let, me, let me break it down. There is that time when all eyes are on you. Mm. When, when, when you have got three, four guys all asking you out and you can't put your finger on what the problem with this guy is and you don't know which one it is that should be your sign that you have to choose one of them mm. or you will miss your opportunity times and seasons mm. times and seasons that's right okay. times and seasons at this particular point in time i had about four or five ten oh, wow. there was about <laughs> <laughs> That was about. There was this guy in South Korea. No, it was Korea. Japan or Korea? Was, well, you are the one who. <laughs> there was Korea. There was one um, medical student in Kolibu. There was one in PIWC. There was one about two in the UK. Oh, and and I have to tell you that none of them had any. There was actually one in tech as well. And ten years but um. <laughs> I was so confused because what I had prayed to God for was that this, the person I wanted to marry had to be a Christian first and foremost, and then had to have education my level or above me. That was that was all I asked. No, no ethnic thing, nothing, no age, no career, just my level of education. At that time, I had just I was in nursing school, so. A nurse, a teacher, a polytechnic leaver, a graduate, anybody, as long as it was within the will of God, was going to be okay for me. And everybody around that time would have been okay for me, just looking at what my specifications were. Mm. Now, in my confusion, my, my mother, bless her, and my parents said, don't go to a man's house. Everybody was welcome to your house, to our house. They, were, they are welcome to come visit you. And so all these men would come visit at every point in time, they would come and visit. And one time my dad, may his soul rest in peace, called and said, Daini, hey, a lot of men come to visit you. What is the problem? And I said, daddy, surprisingly, they all want me. They all want to go out with me. And th this was his response. Hey, can you have a problem? My, my dad, hey, you know what problem? And <laughs> Oh my God. It was like this. This is the time to make the decision because this it, this can make or make you. Anyway, so I. And then he said, "Speak to your mother. Mm -hmm. Speak to your mother about this." So I spoke to my mom, and um, I said to her, "This is what I'm battling with." And my mother, in her Ghanaian Christian Pentecostal, Pentecostal <laughs> mentality, said to me. Mommy, pray about it. When, when you're confused like that, you ask God for a sign. 
And I know at the beginning of your series, Dr. Sam, you spoke about this sign and how the sign was an issue for you and Antia. It was a, and... it was a big problem. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> and Tia will tell you her version. Joseph, <laughs> Joseph says he can understand. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of understand what Tia went through, right? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> anyway, so my mother said to me, pray about it and ask God for a sign. And she said, you can ask God for anything. And so in my prayers, and when I say I prayed, I committed a whole 40-day fast. To praying into my marriage and God giving me the right one. Mm. And this is what I asked God for. I said, whoever wanted, whoever was going to be my husband was supposed to give me a present. And the present had to be a piece of cloth. And the cloth had to either be a GTP or a Hollandaise. I was too specific. I don't even know what was going through my mind to just be that specific. And listen, people, God still answers prayers. Mm. I, I have to say that. Let mm. me just lay that. That God still answers prayers. And when you're so specific, he can be that specific with you mm. and, and answer your need. The Bible says he supplies our needs according to his riches in glory. Mm. He answers prayers. Mm. Anyway, so 40 days I prayed because PRWC then was handling a 40 day fast. And um, I was so specific. I said, I wasn't even gonna open my mouth to ask God because the devil will hear it and bring and let someone bring it to me. So I made this request in my mind. <laughs> and um, so I prayed and for 40 days, anybody that asked, I was like, I've prayed, I'm looking for a sign. Oh, did I get presents? Oh, I got presents. Joseph brought me a necklace. No, really? he, oh, yeah. Somebody <laughs> brought me an album. Somebody, somebody brought me things, things I was getting. I, I didn't even tell them it was a prayer, but they were just bringing things. And there was this guy in South Korea, Korea I think. And one day he called and said, I want to give you a present. I want to give you a piece of cloth. I, I really want to give you a Hollandaise. But the Hollandaise, I have to order it in. He said, no, he said, Hollandaise and lace. What would you like? Mm -hmm. I said, whichever. I don't mind. Whatever you want to give me, I'm okay with it. That's right. And he said, and he's, and then he then said, I mean, if I have to get you Hollandaise, I have to ask somebody in Holland to buy it and post it to you. So I'm going to give you lace. Ooh, sign of a cross. That guy was old. He was like 15 years around it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And so he brought me a beautiful lace. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't the one, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then one time, Joseph, on my birthday, going back, my, my sister Eunice's husband used to work at GTP. And one time he said that every piece of cloth that Woodin makes is made in GTP. They, they, they print all the Woodin fabrics. So on my birthday, Joseph brought me an outfit made from GTP and Woodin. Mm. At this point, let me lay it here that I was falling in love with Joseph. I had falling in love with Joseph. I was, we were talking, but he will ask, so how far? I'm like, I'm still praying. But in my heart, I wish my sign was there. Mm. And I was falling in love with him. I was like, God, if he's the one. And so on my birthday, he brought me this dress. He called Anita, who is actually on the line now. And Anita took you to somebody that made that outfit yeah. from Udin and brought that to me. Mm. So when I got that dress, I thought, that's my Joseph, he's mine, hallelujah. Praise and, God. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, so that I was in the UK, so when I came to Ghana, I was when I actually accepted. Mm. That was on the 9th of February. Yeah. So we have our anniversaries. We have our anniversaries. 9th of February was when I said yes. That's right. Very close to Valentine. So, you know, when I said yes, my Valentine present came. That's there was right. a whole, there was a whole, you know, about it That's at that right. time. <laughs> and um, so I was excited. At this particular point, we were in a relationship. 
I had said yes to a man. Hey. And then I was walking through Osu one day and I entered a wooden shop and I asked them, do you make all your clothes in GTP? And the girl said, well, most of them, oh my heart. I said, well, most of them, not all of them. I went straight to that fabric Joseph used to buy that dress, make that dress. And I said, what about this one? And she said, well, we make this from um, Cote d'Ivoire. It's not GTP. <laughs> Listen, this thing I'm telling you, you, you have no idea. And I didn't tell like, you that. Like suicide. Like it was suicide. You know, <laughs> I had made a mistake. I had made a mistake. The, the outfit he brought was not GTP. It wasn't Hollandaise. It was from Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. I started praying. I was like, God, so he's not the one. Are you to the <laughs> <laughs> Someone said I would have fainted. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, hey, you so can't be fear. Oh my God, I think what helped me then, and sometimes it's good to set certain standards. Mm. I had said to myself, the first guy I said yes to was going to be my husband. Mm. And so I said, God, then if he's not the one, let him leave. Let him leave me because I am not leaving. You know, if he's not the one, let him go. I had my anxieties. I had my fears because my father in one of his speeches had said, your marriage can make or make you. Mm. And he spoke about how there was a woman who almost would have turned his life around. I also knew about my mom and my dad's marriage that almost broke up because of a wedding gown. And that's a whole story to be told on a different day. But I just knew that something small can mess up your life. And I was worried, I was troubled. And I was praying to God to let him leave me if he wasn't the one. Mm. So one day I came to Ghana and he said to me, I really want to buy you a piece of cloth. I wish I had money to buy you a Hollandaise. But can I just buy you a GTP for now? Oh, Jesus. Because I still hadn't told him that was my sign. I hadn't said anything to him. I remember where we went at um, um, Edum. I still have kept that cloth. I made Kaba and Slit with it. And to all those on social media who are saying my Kaba and Slit then wasn't the best. You know, I put up a, a picture yesterday. Yes. And I was trending. Listen, they are too young to know what, was, too young to know what was happening at the time. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he bought me a piece of cloth, GTP. I just went to God and I thanked him. I just thank him for that. Mm. And, and I will tell you that over the years, God has shown me that he deals with me by elimination. Mm. And the things that are not mine, he takes them out of the way. That's right. I, I can give you a zillion reasons why all those guys at that time were not my husbands. To be honest, the one that brought me the lace, who was asking whether I wanted a Hollandaise or a lace, apart from the guy's age, I had no issues with him. I tell you what, whilst he was pursuing me about two days, no, a day before his marriage to another girl, he was still pursuing me. I didn't even know I knew. Mm. Now, this is a guy who had won the heart of my family. Oh, the guy knew how to gift. He was gifting Eunice, gifting my friends, gifting my mother, gifting everybody. He was hands on. But I think a day before his marriage to someone else, he was still pursuing me. Mm. So you ask yourself, was this guy for me? No, I can eliminate, I can talk about everyone. But anyway, that's our, our love story of how we met, how God assured us that this was what it was. Um, wow. you, did, you need, did you need a sign? No. You didn't need a sign? Yeah. No, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, okay. For, for those who don't know, I, I was no, no. born to... A, a, a Catholic catechist. Okay, so my, my, my dad was the Catholic 
a Catholic um, catechist as long as um, I think before I was even born. Mm. So all my life I was a Catholic. I went to Pope John because purely my dad wanted Catholic schools. So you can imagine my background. And then through SU and all that, I became Pentecostal. So in terms of science, no, I had prayed and I, I was, I, I work with having inner peace about some things. So I had a friend, I had inner peace with her. And to me, that was enough for me. Um, I have this philosophy that uh, when God created um, Eve, he just paraded Eve by. He, he didn't say, this is your wife. He, he just let Eve pass by. And Adam started saying, oh, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh, etc." So God would parade people into your life and you decide who they are to you. Mm. So I think Genesis 2, um, God brought everything he created for, for Adam to name. So he, he just gave names. But when he saw Eve, he, he just said that this is mine, this is this is my bone, this is my mm. flesh. Mm. So to me, that is enough. Once my I have inner peace with it, that, that settles it for me. So I didn't really, I wasn't Sorry. praying for a sign. I didn't want to go through difficulty. <laughs> I, I want to be like. <laughs> no 40 day wahala. No 40 day wahala. I mean, to be fair, the first <laughs> days, I did come actually because it was a check it thing as well. It was a check okay. It was a check 40 days as well. So, what are you praying about me? Not really. <laughs> but, but I mean, to, to be fair, I, I to be fair, the reason I was so relaxed was I, I think I was in a fifth year medical school, and I, it wasn't like I must marry tomorrow. So I think I had all the time ahead of me. Yeah. I, I wasn't in a hurry. Uh, my initial plan was well, I finished medical school. I take some years to sort myself out before I even think about marriage, and then. I met someone I fell in love with, and I thought, okay, that's it. That's it. That's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so when God paraded me in front of him, um, he took me, and, and I gave him, I gave, well, so it took two years, and I've been paying for this the rest of my life. Um, it took me two years to say yes to him, and in, in a joyful moment when I say, I love you more than you love me, he goes, no. I love you first, just as Christ first loved us. I love you first. You can love me more. And he will go like two years. Oh, Jesus, guys, you're bringing these pictures oh, up. We got to no. bring it up. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, this is my wife in secondary school. Okay, so, so my wife is, is still, you know what? Still, still gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, even at that time. Thank you. <laughs> this is the Abuzigi, Abuzigi <laughs> too. <laughs> Oh, this is the secondary school. This, this is, is secondary some school. Many, many years ago. Okay. Oh, very uh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like and comment. Thank you very much.